Hello and welcome to Tea Talk 101. I'm your host, Kennedy Monroe, and this week we are back after a two week hiatus. I apologize for being gone, but I was on vacation and I started a new job. So thank you so much for joining us. And this week we discuss I am 40. So hey, it's my birthday. So we're gonna, I'm going to talk to you about my life as a trans woman. Even though Kennedy is celebrating 20 years, my body is celebrating 40. So go down memory lane with me as I talk about my whole thing on this week's episode of Tea Talk 101. <laughs> Everyone and welcome to another episode of Tea Talk 101. I am your host Kennedy Monroe, and so this week we're gonna talk, take you back down. I'm gonna take you back down memory lane because, and also just talk about little things. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but tomorrow I will be turning 40. I was born in 1980. I'm a Leo. And in 2000, I started transitioning. So that practically tells you right now that I've spent half of my life living as my authentic self. So I'm very proud and happy of where I am today. And I just want to say thank you all for joining me here on Tea Talk for this birthday edition. And um, so we'll get right into it. I grew up in a small town outside of Houston. So when I say small, it's not small in size. It's small in population. Um, it's very country. It's also um, a Baptist town. Uh, it is diverse, which is nice. So I grew up with diversity in my high school. Um, when I was 15, I went to a Thespian convention, which is a theater um, society, went to a national convention in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I met so many different and unique people, and I really found part of myself at that time. The part that I was always struggling with it, I found it when I um, got to Lincoln, Nebraska. So you gotta think about this. This is like 1995. No, maybe 96. So I wasn't quite 16 yet, but it was the summer of 1996. I was going into my sophomore year of high school, and um, I met all these wonderful people that that were very eclectic and different and unique, and it was so different than what I was used to from where I grew up or how my family was. And... I met a gay people. I met alternative people. I learned what ska was at the time. <laughs> um, uh, at the time. So, at being there, I came out to my best friend, Johnny. And, ironically, we both came out th together. Um, I let him know that probably when we got back home from Lincoln... And we started school, I would be letting people know that I was gay. And I was happy. I was scary. I came back home thinking everything was going to be different. And I was going to tell people and then all this stuff. And long story short, it, it I did come out to a lot of people, even family. And it took people by storm. But I also really figured out that living my truth at the time... Um, kept the bullies to the side because now they couldn't bully me and tell me I was gay. Coming out was a release for me because I was able to let go of something that had been hurting me or bothering me. Um, and I felt like, oh, this is me. And the older I got in my teens, the part that I started realizing that stuff was still not right with me 
And because it's in the 90s, it was very hard to come to figure out what that was. And why I talk about media reputation, rep, media representation of trans people is crucial is because in the 90s, there was no trans people on TV. There was no trans people really depicted into TV. Um, so I never saw that. And a lot of people go, when did you know that you were trans? And I was, I tell people all the time, I'm not that person that was like, oh, I knew when I was a kid. I knew when I was five. I didn't know that. And it, and I can look back on my life and say, oh, there's signs. And I can ask family members like my grandma and she'll tell me that they, there were signs and they just didn't have language for it and all this stuff. So, for me, the movies that made me happy and made me re relate after coming out or, you know, were like Tu Wong Fu, um, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, The Birdcage. And a lot of people go, oh, that's just drag. Sh that's just drag movies. Well, for me, in a way, I was relating to those men dressing up as women because I wanted to be the woman part of the drag and it just never really clicked when um you look at Priscilla there is a trans character in there and I don't even know if I even got it back then what trans was but I did relate to her a lot and like her a lot but she was also very a lot older so for me and my mindset I couldn't grasp it um but those type of things are what made me happy I loved when <laughs> Priscilla came on VH1 and you got to watch it and I, it just I love the costumes I love the makeup and it just made me happy and when um I turned 18 in high school. Um, actually, I was, yeah, 18, 19. Why? Well, yeah, I was, I was still 18. I was 18 in high school. Um, then the summer of 99, um, I saw my first trans performer, which is Erica Andrews, at a bar in Houston called Toys disco and she was performing with Monique Johnson and I was like oh my god my friend goes you know that they used to be guys and I was like wow they were gorgeous they were they got basically practically naked and I was just like oh my god this is amazing so I got up the courage and talked to Erica after the show and basically said, I want to do this. I want to be a showgirl. I want to be a drag queen. How do I do it? And um, she just gave me a lot of tips and she was very motivational. I came back every week and then they finally let me do little um, cameos on the show where I got just paid tips and it was fun and I grew a little bit from there. But that was the moment I realized that I was trans. And I just didn't know how I was going to get there to that point of um, discovering that I was trans or where to start. But so many wonderful people fell into my life at the time that I needed it. My drag mother eventually came into my life. She was a black trans woman. Um, she taught me a lot about makeup and hair and taught me about... Um, all the various things of performing and being an entertainer. And then I got on to a show at this bar called EJ's. And um, I got to work with Roxanne Collins, which is another black trans woman who just really mentored me and gave me guidance in the sense of becoming a good show person. But she also showed me how to be professional in the sense. And so that was another trans woman that dropped into my life. And then... You have people like Diane Michaels, uh, uh, Lana Blake, uh, Kelly Lauren, all these, Tommy Ross, all these wonderful trans women in shows 
and just oh Courtney Van Wells, which is now Miss Fancy, um, Fancy Vega, uh, just people that I looked up to and admired so much, who had a huge impact on my life. And when I decided to go to cosmetology school, I knew that um, after I got cosmetology school, I was going to move to Chicago because I fell in love with Chicago um, because of Miss Continental. And I said, one day I'm going to live here. And I really made it a dream. I went to Chicago not knowing anybody. Got to Chicago and really tried to make a life of myself. So when I was in Chicago, I worked for the salon. Tambray Lance Salon. It was in a suburb called Lombard. And um, I went in the Tuesday before I was to start work to just see the salon and talk to her, the owner, and see clients and stuff like that. And when it was all done, she took me to, she set me in a meeting. I remember it so, so like it was yesterday. She set me down. And she says, my clients don't know if you're a boy or a girl, and I don't know what to tell them, and I don't want to have to deal with this question all the time. So I need to know, did you move to Chicago because you want to become a woman, or did you move to Chicago for something else? And she's like, if you want to be a woman, I will support it, and you need to come to work every day dressed as a woman. And I was thrall I was shocked by it, but I was happy because in my brain, I didn't know how I was going to transition in a job or anything like that. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I made it happen. I literally was like, okay, this is going to be my thing. And I got went back to my apartment, got rid of any boy clothes I had, and I kept just a few, but everything else I got rid of and just lived my life as Kennedy. And that is how beautiful stuff happens. <laughs> but also, being trans in the 2000s was kind of really rough and hard because you really just couldn't just go to a doctor if you wanted to go to a doctor and you had to know somebody and how to get hormones. I mean, majority of my hormones I bought younger were from either overseas or... Um, from my friends who had hormones, like they got a lot through the system. Um, I remember, of course, my co-host of the show, Raina Valentina. She, Valentino, she told me that, um, you know, she goes, you can file for disability and uh, because you're trans. And um, you can only work so many hours a week, but... Um, you get a check from the government. And every trans person I knew up there was getting a check from the government because they couldn't work because being trans, people wouldn't hire them. So I felt blessed that I had a job. So I really didn't want to file for disability. But the great thing about that was is that all my friends that did have that got so many hormones from the government that they could sell them. And they sold them. So I'd buy hormones from the girls. A dollar a pill. So I'd pay $30 for 30 pills. Stuff like that. And um, that's how I transitioned. And um, I, when I came to a point that I wanted to have breasts, um, I did go to a plastic surgeon. And when they found out I was trans, they doubled the price of what they originally quoted me. So... Uh, being trans was rough because you couldn't get the medical attention that you can these days. Um, and the elective surgeries that you could get were a lot easier. So a lot of us girls are pumped with silicone and I'm pumped with silicone. And I know one day it's going to come back and bite me in the ass. But um, I did what made me happy. Like I knew I never wanted to have bottom surgery. I knew that I just wanted to be a trans woman. I never wanted to be a cis woman. I tried to live stealth. It worked maybe a, a year at the max, and I was over it. Because I hated dating guys and pretending that I wasn't trans, and the reality was that I was. And then I started getting in fucked up relationships where men just wanted me as a fantasy or a secret, and... 
And if they did not care that I was trans and people around me, they treated me like shit. And so, um, it was really rough in my 20s until I met my partner, Sean, in 2008. Um, he was the first person that really didn't care about being out in public with me or anywhere. He just really just loved me and he had already been with a trans person before me. So, it was just like nothing really mattered. He wasn't really a chaser. He just was a cool person and I met him and had a great time in my life and we had some great memories and he took me down this wonderful road that we spent a long time together till he passed away in 2014 and um, it changed my life then too. So being trans and uh, now going 40, so being trans for 20 years, so I'm, I'm really 20 years old because <laughs> people always say you don't look 40, you look 25. And so, in some way, Kennedy is 20 years old, so that must show, and maybe it's my, maybe it's the genetics in my family that have allowed me to make it this far and look good, because my mom doesn't look her age, my grandma doesn't look her age, and so it's really nice to be going on 40 and not feeling 40, and having people look at you and go, oh my god, I can't believe you're 40, and shocked. So, it is wonderful. So, what advice I would give someone that is transitioning or trying to find their selves and not knowing what to do is just know that there is no easy way to go about your transition, and there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's all about what makes you feel better as a human being, what makes you feel happy, and what makes you tick, and what makes you um, happy. And for me, that's all the advice I can give someone. And something I like to tell people all the time is that you are beautiful, you are loved, and you're valid. Maybe you don't see that, but there's someone out there that does feel like you are someone that they love, and that you're beautiful to them, and that they, and that you are valid, you are unique, you are in your own set of elements, and something I've always said to people too, is that you don't have to have all these surgeries to be trans, you can do whatever you want to be you, it's how you want to be, how you want to live your life, and how well that happens, being trans is beautiful. I wouldn't change it for anything. Uh, I wish things would have happened to me. I wish that maybe I could have had more money or I could be at a different place now at 40 that I didn't do because maybe some of the stuff I did in my life didn't lead me there. Um, but I feel like now that I'm at, I'm 40, uh, about to, <laughs> tomorrow 40, um, that life is treating me good. I have a stable job and a career that I love. And I have insurance and 401k and all these things that I never dreamt of when I first transitioned. Because I felt like being trans, no one would hire me. Yes, I was working in a salon. But when I left the salon, I felt like I had to try to do something and, and nothing just worked. So I spent all my years just being this artistic person. And sometimes being artistic and a gypsy is wonderful. But the reality is, is that what am I going to do when I'm old? I, and, and so that was where I had to go find a career that accepted me as being trans. Where I can grow. Where I can be um, self-sufficient and I can support my husband and us and all these beautiful things and so working for uh, Amazon has given me all those wonderful things so I'm very very proud of where I am today and um, what's crazy is the other day um, I started week zero at a new building that's just launching uh, so I am at today will be my third day with associates so um we started taking associates this past sunday so it's been wonderful and what's crazy is last week last friday i was standing in front of them where we did a presentation where you get to meet each person that's in leadership and i'm in leadership so 
it was my first time really outing myself in front of people I really didn't know. I don't have a problem talking in front of people. I don't have a problem being billed or going on a trans panel and talking about people. Um, but when you're in a company and when I first started working for Amazon, even though I knew that they protected trans people and it, you could move up being trans, it still fe scared me. I didn't come out for a year after being at my first building. And the only reason I did eventually come out is because of their, their, um, their, their group called Glamazon, which is the LGBTQ and ally network, um, and that really what got me to come out. And I realized that me being out uh, was good for other people to see me. And not just trans people, but um, anybody in the LGBTQ community could see me at work and be out and open that um, they felt safe. And so as a leader now, I felt like I needed to basically come into this new building and set a president. And basically out myself to them. It was nerve-wracking and scary, but and the reality is, is no one looked at me really different. It made me see that, okay, I'm here to do my job, and also I can be an inspiration and a leader to other people. So that was really, really um, amazing, and I'm hoping that my growth with Amazon will continue and that I'll be able to get more involved in the Glamazon part and being able to help other people in their journey. And um, that's what makes this so amazing that's why i love doing this show that's why i love doing all the things that i've done as a trans woman i've always put myself in the spotlight or out there so people can be able to have some kind of representation and feel like that they relate to somebody and when someone says that i'm an icon or i'm a treasure or um Tran young trans people just tell me how amazing or they look up to me it's it's so amazing it just makes me feel validated because um all these years that's all i ever wanted to be to someone is a role model someone to see that person that i didn't see when i was a teenager that's what i do that's why i do everything that's why i do my music that's why i do my podcast that's why i do my videos that's why i do Everything. Why I did the adult industry is because I want everybody to see people just like them. I'm still just a normal girl trying to live life. I, and if I can be an inspiration to somebody, that makes me happy. And that's what makes me feel joy is when other people tell me that I had an impact on their transition. Or that being who I am has really paved the way for other people. I'm not Laverne Cox. I'm not Trace Lissette. I'm not, you know, Candace Kane. But, um, I am a human being and, um, I've documented my life online since I started transitioning. Um, I've been on a trans magazine. I wrote articles in trans magazines. So, people have always really seen my life documented it. and what's so crazy is the other day my husband was at um a grocery store because he's a personal shopper and one of the people at the grocery store that works there is trans and early in their transition and my husband has watched this person transition and he basically told her that you know if you need anything you should she should get a hold of my wife because she's you know, great inspiration, a great mentor. You can ask her lots of questions about where to go for medical care or whatever, stuff like that. And he told her that his wife was Kennedy Monroe and she kind of got fangirled out. Couldn't believe it. And so those kind of things make it special because someone knows who I am and that I've touched them and that they seen what I've done so for me 20 years of being Kennedy and 20 years of documenting who I am I did it for this very reason that that girl is transitioning right now has a role model to look up to and that valid valid special and that um um no one can take that away from her so very very excited 
Um, um, I'm glad I'm that you that all have come, have come with, with me on this journey, journey here on, on the podcast at T-Talk, T-Talk 101. If you're new, I am excited that you're here. If you're from the original podcast and love the show, I'm glad you're back, and I'm glad I can bring you these wonderful um, stories and inspirations. So... I want you to tell me what you want to see, what it is that you want to hear, what do you want me to talk about, what things bring life to you. And um, if you're a Leo, I want to know, because I love shouting out Leos, so um, if you're a Leo, it's Leo season, the lions are in the house, Um, and um, just know that you are beautiful, you are loved, and you're valid, and don't let anybody take that away from you, okay? Okay. And, of course, follow me on Instagram at Kennedy. Follow me on Twitter at Kennedy Monroe. Follow me on um, Facebook at Kennedy Monroe. Follow me on YouTube at Kennedy Monroe. I mean, I'm everywhere. Follow me on TikTok at Kennedy Monroe. Those are all the wonderful places you can follow me and find me. But um, also you can go to KennedyMonroe.com for all information on the show, on me, what's going on, when my new music is dropping, all those sort of things. But make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to this podcast. Make sure you subscribe. And wherever you listen to it, please rate it. Leave a comment so other people can see it. It helps grow this podcast because it's still very brand new. So I need your help and your um, love to keep it continuous. So thank you so, so much for everything you do. And until next time, I will see you all later. I hope you all have a wonderful week. And I know I'll be able to tell you about my 40th birthday on the next episode here at T-Talk 101. Bye.